From a life of parties and open bars to life now behind bars, in the past week, P. Diddy has seen some major lifestyle changes. And now we're getting reports that Diddy isn't eating while in jail. And it could be because he thinks someone's trying to poison his food. Plus, he's been transferred to a protective unit that already houses convicted fraudster Sam Binkman Free. So what's it like for a high-profile defendant like Diddy to be locked up in one of the most rundown and violent jails in the U.S.? For that, we'll turn to criminal defense attorney and law and crime legal analyst Imran Ansari, who repped other high-profile defendants like Harvey Weinstein and 50 Cent. I'm Sierra Gillespie, and this is Law and Crime News. All right, so big news out of New York, where P. Diddy has been held for more than a week in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. This comes after Diddy's arrest last Monday, following his indictment by a federal grand jury on charges of racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. The 14-page indictment lays out some pretty strong claims against Diddy, alleging he's guilty of sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The indictment goes on to allege Diddy showed a pattern of abuse, mostly against women, that included verbal, emotional, physical, and sexual abuse, including the use of extensive grooming tactics. There's also mention of something referred to as freak-offs, which are described as elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged, directed, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. During these so-called freak-offs, Diddy would often drug his victims, sometimes without their knowledge, to keep them obedient and compliant. Then, Diddy allegedly required these victims to have sex with prostitutes, and oftentimes, he recorded that too. Again, these recordings were made without the victim's knowledge or consent. These freak-off sessions were facilitated by Diddy's associates that the indictment refers to as part of the Combs Enterprise. These associates would procure the sex workers, book the hotel rooms where these freak-offs would take place, and stock the rooms with necessities like baby oil and lube. Now is a good time to note that when federal authorities executed search warrants at two of Diddy's properties, they collected 1,000 bottles of lube and baby oil, which puts into perspective the severity and scope of these freak-offs. Also during these raids, federal authorities collected digital evidence of this alleged illegal activity. And they kind of had a heads up that Diddy was recording some of this. Multiple civil lawsuits filed against Diddy starting in November of last year allege he sexually assaulted the plaintiffs and often recorded it. Okay, I know you're multitasking when you're watching our videos, but if you're out running errands, listen up, this is for you. I have to tell you about the free app Upside that gets you cash back on daily essentials. I use it every time I pump gas. It's so easy and free, why not? All you have to do is get the Upside app and claim an offer for whatever you're buying. So you pay as usual and then just follow the steps on the app to get paid. To find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on your screen and use our promo code LCNEWS to get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. The bombshells were first dropped by Cassandra Ventura, or the singer Cassie, when she filed civil suit last November. Cassie dated Diddy for years, and she alleges he was physically, verbally, and sexually abusive toward her during that time. Her lawsuit was settled just one day after it was filed, but that was just the start of the civil suits against Diddy. Since 2023, 11 civil suits have listed P. Diddy as the defendant. And now, one federal indictment lists him as the defendant, too. After his arrest, Diddy pleaded not guilty to the charges and was twice denied bail. His legal team offered a pretty sizable bail package, too, saying that Diddy would put up $50 million for his release. This would have been co-signed by Diddy, his sister, his mom, his three adult sons, and the mothers of two of his children. The defense also suggested that Diddy would have major restrictions on travel, a GPS monitor, and even limitations on female visitors. All this was presented last week, but U.S. District Judge Andrew L. Carter said no, arguing this bail package was insufficient to guarantee the safety of the community or to maintain the integrity of the case. So that meant Diddy was remanded to jail, specifically the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. 
According to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, the jail, often referred to as just MDC, houses 1,218 inmates right now of both genders. But according to Diddy's legal team, the jail is notoriously dangerous and run down. Diddy's attorney, Mark Agnifilo, argues there are major issues with the jail, citing violence, poor conditions, overcrowding, and staffing issues. He also cited some startling statistics. Two inmates have been killed at MDC since this June, and at least four inmates have died by suicide over the past three years. On top of that, six staff members have been charged with criminal activity over the past five years. Diddy's team wants him transferred to a different jail in New Jersey, but Judge Carter says it's up to the Federal Bureau of Prisons to make that decision. So for now, MDC is where Diddy calls home. It's usually where defendants are housed after their arrest and as they're awaiting trial in either Manhattan or Brooklyn. But the issues at MDC are so severe that some judges even refuse to send defendants there at all. But even with its less than desirable conditions, MDC is no stranger to high profile inmates. Previously housing are Kelly, Ghislaine Mackwell, and Sam Bankman Freed, who's actually there right now. Bankman Freed was convicted of fraud and money laundering last November after the collapse of his cryptocurrency exchange, FTX. And as it happens, Bankman Freed and Diddy are being housed in the same part of MDC, a unit for inmates that requires special protection. That's people like Diddy or Bankman Freed who are high profile names, but it also cares for inmates who may need protection as they assist with ongoing investigations in open cases. Since Diddy's move to this area of MDC, there are reports that he's spoken briefly to his children over the phone. Diddy has seven children, ranging in age from 33 to 23 months old. According to reports, Diddy is concerned about how his kids are handling his arrest and detainment. And meanwhile, they're allegedly in a state of crisis after only experiencing Diddy as a loving, devoted father. Meanwhile, there are other reports that Diddy has stopped eating. This could be because he isn't enjoying the food, but it also could be because he's paranoid that someone is out to get him and may slip poison into his food. But is that likely or even possible? And what are the perils of MDC, especially for a high profile defendant like Diddy? Here's where we have to bring in criminal defense attorney Imran Ansari, who represented other celebs like 50 Cent or Harvey Weinstein. He says Diddy's arrest wasn't surprising. I think we all saw the writing on the wall with Diddy in terms of the civil case leading to a federal investigation. We saw the raids on his residence. And I think that the indictment that we see now wasn't so much a surprise. And it was something that we expected arrest was going to come down the line. Now he has been arrested. He's been denied bail. So he is behind bars in Brooklyn. And there's been a lot of articles about this. His attorneys are saying that the conditions there at MDC are horrific, horrendous. They're not appropriate to stay in. What is your experience there? Is it really as horrendous as they're saying? I've had many clients who were housed in MDC Brooklyn. And I can tell you the reports that the facility is something that is less than desirable, is 100% accurate. There's been a lot of reports of it being below standard in terms of prison standards. And uh, of course, a prison isn't meant to be a comfortable place, but of course, they have to provide the basic human rights to their inmates. And MDC Brooklyn has been plagued with overcrowding, with violence, with poor food, with poor uh, cleanliness. Uh, and P. Diddy, who is in a protective custody unit, uh, is still experiencing all the uh, bad things that MDC Brooklyn has to offer, uh, and it doesn't have to uh, it doesn't have a lot to offer in terms of uh, comfort or uh, you know things that an inmate would be looking for. So obviously, anyone who's behind bars is hoping to have a nice place to sleep food, comfort, as you were saying. But is this place really dangerous? I know that they listed a couple of statistics that there had been several suicides, even potentially murders. So is it possible that he could be in danger? So he's in protective custody now in the SHU unit, but his lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, pointed out recent events in that prison. And MDC Brooklyn has been plagued with a lot of violent acts. It's been really criticized in terms of the conditions that prison inmates have to live with. Uh, and certainly, uh, Diddy would be facing uh, potential dangers because a prison 
by virtue of it being a prison, is not necessarily a good place to be. It's not a safe place to be, uh, but particularly this facility is known to have a lot of problems in the last few years. What would it look like for Diddy in this protective care unit, I guess? He's separated from general population, but what is his day-to-day like? So Diddy's life in the shoe, in that specialized housing unit where he's been placed for his own safety, is going to be something that's rather uh, routine and mundane. He's not going to be necessarily even enjoying some of the things that general population, aka Gen Pop, enjoys because he's being in a special segregated unit for his own safety, which means he's going to be under more constant observation by guards, his uh, comings and goings in and out of his cell for recreational time and for meal time are gonna be more scrutinized. So although the shoe unit is technically for the prison inmate's safety, and of course, Diddy being a high profile inmate requires that, uh, it also means more restrictions for that inmate. Following Diddy's arrest, we reported news that he was placed on suicide watch. It's unclear whether he was actually suicidal or if this was just a safety precaution. But we do know a mental health professional visits his cell at least several times a day. Is that possible for Diddy? He may not have these suicidal ideations, but it's just for his safety? It's pretty routine, especially for a high-profile inmate to be placed on suicide watch, especially when they're going from a dramatic change from their life outside prison to a life inside prison, something that they may not be used to. Uh, It's typical and routine for an inmate like that to be placed on suicide watch for their own safety. And the prison kind of wants to make sure uh, that, you know, when all eyes are on them, that nothing happens on their watch. So we do know that Diddy's lawyers did say that he's ready and willing uh, to fight the charges and ready to fight the allegations against him. And he's of sound mind. So it doesn't surprise me that he's placed on suicide watch by corrections simply for his own safety and in order for the prison to sort of CYA. So we're talking about this case simply because Diddy is a huge celebrity, a high profile defendant who's now placed behind bars, a far cry from the mansions that we're used to seeing him in. What are some of the issues with having a high profile defendant? Does it make things more dangerous, more difficult? What do you think? Well, being high profile in prison, uh, based on uh, knowledge from some of my own clients, uh, is somewhat worrying for them, especially when they are coming from an environment which was a polar opposite from what they are experiencing prison. So it's a shock. uh, It's frightening. And of course, they have to deal with the real reality now that they are behind bars and they're facing criminal charges. It also presents uh, a added sort of you know, hurdle for us as attorneys who are defending a client like that, because we are obviously cognizant of uh, the big change in their life that they're dealing with psychologically, and then also obviously the legal aspects of things, uh, but also the court of public opinion. You are constantly looking at how the public is receiving your client or a defendant when they are high profile, and you are sort of tending to their needs because now they are dealing with such a dramatic change in their life. They went from mansion to prison, and sometimes that's a hurdle, along with the legal fight, uh, all its own. And then there's the question of Diddy's communication. Who's he making contact with from the inside? So Diddy has pleaded not guilty to these charges, so of course we're expecting him to bring a strong defense with his attorneys, his team. Obviously, they're going to be preparing. But does it add a layer of challenge, the fact that Diddy is behind bars? What does it look like for attorneys hoping to meet with him? Would would they have their own rooms? Would they talk over those phone things we see in movies? What would it really look like? So when you have a client who is behind bars, you are meeting with them on legal visits, Uh, and you are talking to them on a secured line, which is an attorney or legal call where it's not being recorded and it's afforded that privilege, you know, that attorney-client privilege, that privacy there. Uh, But it does present hurdles uh, when having a client behind bars because you're sort of uh, really reliant on A, the prison schedule, um, B, you know, the prison calls. You can't call your client, they're calling you. So even if you have something that you need to talk to your client about urgently, you got to wait until you get that prison call from prison, or you're making that visit yourself to jail to have a legal visit. 
So it's always easier uh, to represent someone who has been uh, bail on out on bail because they could come to your office or you could visit them or even if they're on house arrest, they're typically allowed to come to your law office. Uh, so it does present that added hurdle when you're representing someone who is remanded or in jail. But of course, we have to do what we have to do as defense attorneys and we make it work. We talked about the side of his defense, obviously speaking with his legal team, but what about his family? We have seen some reports that Diddy has had brief phone calls with his children. What would that look like? Is it a phone call privilege system that he would get more calls as time goes on if he has good behavior, that kind of thing? So inmates are afforded time to talk to their family, of course, family visits, but they are restricted in terms of uh, certain hours where they can make that call, certain amount of minutes they have uh, in terms of making a call, which is a non-legal call, and also visitation hours and things like that. And of course, it's a massive shock to the family. Uh, it's not only a shock to the defendant or the inmate, but the family is now dealing with the re reality that someone who that they were able to communicate with, whether it be you know Diddy's children uh, calling him or seeing him, now there's all these restrictions around it, and it's happening in a very traumatic time uh, so it all, all also presents a real change of circumstances, a real stressor for a defendant or inmate's family when they see someone that they love, uh, no matter what they're accused of, what, no matter what the allegations are, now they have to go through um, the prison system in order to see them or even speak to them. You spoke about these phone calls between Diddy and his attorneys. Obviously, those ones aren't going to be recorded. But in regards to the phone calls with his family, is this something that's going to be recorded and something prosecutors or even the defense are going to keep an eye on? A phone call between an inmate and a non-attorney, like a family member or a friend, those are subject to being recorded. So a defense attorney, I'm sure P. Diddy's attorneys, Mark Agnifilo and his team, have told him, if you're going to have any phone conversations with family, friends, or non-attorneys, you know, you got to be careful with what you say. It's going to be recorded, and it could be used against you, whatever you say in those recordings. Um, as a prosecutor or a former prosecutor, when I was a prosecutor, I, I, I used phone, uh, jail phone calls in my case in chief. I used it as evidence against defendants uh, because we would receive those recordings. And sometimes people are not careful about what they say to people on the phone. As a defense attorney, I always tell my clients, do not talk on the phone openly uh, to friends and family because it's being recorded. You never want to say something that could come back and used against you in a court of law. So yes, those phone calls are not subject to attorney-client privilege. They're fair game for prosecutors and law enforcement. So you got to be careful to what you say on a non-privileged line like that. But there's still the question of whether Diddy's eating while in jail. Going back to Diddy's day-to-day -day life behind bars, there have been some reports that he's not eating. This could be maybe because the food isn't up to his standards, it's not what he likes, but also there are some potential reports that he's fearing someone may poison his food. What do you make of all that? So having been to MDC Brooklyn to visit my clients and talking to them about uh, their experience inside and what they're eating and whatnot, I can tell you that they're not getting any Michelin starred or gourmet food in prison. So you got to think on a, a practical standpoint, a realistic standpoint, Diddy's probably used to really good food uh, and the best food that money could buy. You know, of course, he had the resources for that. So it could be that the food is just so reprehensible to him and he's not, you know, he doesn't have a taste for it that he's not eating because of that. Or it could be a genuine fear that he has that someone may be out to get him uh, and then he doesn't want to take that risk. Of course, this is all speculation, Sierra, but uh, that could be a, a chance. Of course, there's the notorious incident in uh, near history with Jeffrey Epstein, where there are conspiracy theories that rather than suicide, he was actually killed uh, in prison. I don't know what's going on in Diddy's head. I don't know, uh, you know, if it's the food that's being bad, if he's not eating it, or there's some other fears going on there. Uh, but generally, the food in prison is not palatable, per se. Uh, and that could be the reason why, if that's true. Diddy's team has made it super clear that they do not want their client there at MDC. Is it possible that he's transferred to a different facility ahead of trial? I would imagine that... Uh, 
P. Diddy's defense team, Mark Agnifilo and his team would be doing everything and anything to try to get Diddy out, right? They would probably be appealing, and I believe they are, uh, the remand of Diddy uh, and trying to get him out in a less restrictive and non-custodial uh, detention, right? That could be house arrest where he's being monitored uh, or maybe to a different facility altogether. And I can speak that from clients that we've had at my firm and that I've represented, uh, we've had inmates go from, and clients go from one facility uh, that may be less than desirable to another facility where they may be getting better care, let's say if they have a medical problem, or just generally we're making a pitch to get them out of jail, uh, that one prison to another. Of course, that's all in the discretion of prison officials, and it's not a given, but I would imagine that Diddy's attorneys are doing everything, A, to get him out of jail, right, and to have this remand reconsidered, uh, and also perhaps have him transferred to a different facility, which is less harsh than MDC Brooklyn. But again, um, you got to really show a real good cause for prison officials to use their discretion uh, to take an inmate out of one prison to another, because you got to remember, Sarah, that P Diddy is supposed to be treated the same way as any other inmate in that facility with no special treatment. I think it's interesting, this Diddy case, to show how a civil lawsuit really brought on a deeper investigation into Diddy, the allegations against him, and ultimately led to this indictment. And it is a serious indictment. It's not to be taken lightly. He is in jail. Uh, and it's always interesting to see someone who was at the top sort of having this you know, meteoric fall uh, to this level. Of course, his attorneys are going to go out there swinging in his defense. Uh, and prosecutors, of course, are going to be standing by their case. Um, but it's fascinating to see someone who was so uh, embraced by the public for his music, for his persona, now finding himself in the harsh facility like MDC Brooklyn. Uh, and it's also a little surprising to me that he actually got remanded to MDC Brooklyn because they were actually giving a decent bail package uh, to prosecutors, to the court um, for, you know, house arrest and putting up collateral and whatnot. So we'll see if that's going to be uh, reversed or, re you know, looked at with a change of circumstances, what have you. But uh, it's going to be an interesting case to see. And whenever you have a celebrity like this, you know the public are going to be watching every move, both in court by the prosecutor and by the defense. After Diddy's arrest, he pleaded not guilty to the federal charges against him. A statement from his legal team reads, quote, Sean Diddy Combs is a music icon, self-made entrepreneur, loving family man, and proven philanthropist who has spent the last 30 years building an empire, adoring his children, and working to uplift the black community. He is an imperfect person, but is not criminal. To his credit, Mr. Combs has been nothing but cooperative with this investigation, and he voluntarily relocated to New York last week in anticipation of these charges. Please reserve your judgment until you have all the facts. These are the acts of an innocent man with nothing to hide, and he looks forward to clearing his name in court. Diddy is expected back in court on October 9th. We'll bring you the updates then, and of course, whatever develops before that next hearing. For Law & Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.